So I want to begin this talk with a short prayer by reading from Scripture, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, because he has visited and wrought the salvation of his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation to us in the house of David his servant, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets who are from the beginning, salvation from our enemies and from the hands of all who hate us, to perform mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy testament, the oath he swore to Abraham our father, that he would grant us that being delivered from the hand of our enemies, we may serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. St. John Paul II said that heaven is neither an abstraction nor a physical place in the clouds, but a living personal relationship with the Holy Trinity. It is our meeting with the Father, which takes place in the risen Christ through communion of the Holy Spirit. So according to the Pope, heaven is more than a place where the righteous go, but it is a state of our union with God. So for this talk, I would like to ask you to suspend your belief that heaven is a place where we go to. But instead, think of it as a state of our life that is in communion with God. And this communion with God is His plan for us, which according to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 to 6, this is the God's plan for us before the foundation of the world. And this is our inheritance to live with God for eternity. Sadly, when Adam rejected God, he handed over this supernatural ability to live this inheritance to the devil because our faculties have been corrupted. Since our faculties have been corrupted, we have lost that freedom to serve God without fear in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life, which is why Jesus had to come and redeem us from the devil by destroying completely the devil's dominion over us. Jesus redeemed us with his blood. From the Hebrew perspective, blood is life. Therefore, we can say that Jesus redeemed us with his life. But when did Jesus have life? Well, his human life started in the incarnation. The Son of God was alive with the Father from eternity. And this eternal life is what redeemed us. The life of Jesus as God and man redeemed us. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 to 11 tells us that this life of Jesus was a life of emptying of himself to the Father, where he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being made in the likeness of men, and in habit found as a man. He humbled himself, becoming obedient unto death, even death on a cross. The taking the form of a slave, the incarnation, was made possible after Jesus emptied himself to the Father from eternity. The incarnation is the emptying of the Son of God to the Father, made visible. And his death on the cross fully revealed how he redeemed us by shedding every drop of his blood, literally by emptying his life. The Son of God literally emptied his life so he can fill us with living water. The emptying of Jesus did not end in his death because even in the resurrection and ascension, Jesus showed his emptying to the Father when the Father raised him from the dead to fully destroy the dominion of Satan over us. Because Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, Satan has no hold on us. Sin and death has no hold on us. Because we have been saved, the Hebrew context of salvation is to be set free. So when we say that we are saved, 
it means that we are set free. We are saved, set free to receive our inheritance, to live in communion with God again, to worship Him without fear in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. The completion of our salvation happens only when we agree to be saved by God. When we empty ourselves to Jesus as He emptied Himself to the Father, this means that we must let the Father do to us according to His Word. We surrender ourselves and let God do to us as He wills. When we empty ourselves to God, He does great things to us. Sadly, many today are living in the midst of their suffering, and anyone who's alive today suffers. Some suffer from the shame, or some suffer from grief, from pain, from addictions, doubts, anger, from their financial situations, illness, broken relationships, and many other things. And in our suffering, we are actually searching for God. But the sad thing is, people are searching for God and yet do not know that they are searching for God. While God is not the source of all these sufferings, He uses these to reveal Himself to us. God wants to reveal Himself to us, but we cannot see Him because we have not emptied ourselves to Him. We have our own ideas of God. We have our own ideas of how God should work in our lives. We have our own ideas of how God is to set us free. For us to empty ourselves, we need to allow God to do what He wants to do with us. But emptying ourselves to God does not mean that this su these sufferings will go away. We will still suffer. We will still continue to sin. We will still continue to fail, and we will die eventually. But God wants to heal us, and it has to be done His way. Sufferings may still be there when we walk out of this church, but when we empty ourselves to Jesus, He enters our lives and leads us through all these sufferings, showing us how we are to empty ourselves to His Father through the cross and through His death. Jesus did not establish the kingdom of heaven on earth by avoiding death. Instead, he confronted death, battled death, and destroyed it completely by rising again from the dead. And we too, if we go and allow Jesus to lead us through our sufferings, we too will rise victorious when we allow Jesus into our lives and to lead us through our sufferings. So today is a call to surrender and to empty ourselves to Jesus. And I would like to end my talk with a prayer. So I invite you to bow your heads and let what Jesus said in Scripture echo in your mind. Come to me, all who are weary and are burdened, and I will give you rest. So if you are tired or fearful of your situation, if you are suffering and in the midst of your suffering, come to Jesus. Draw near to Him, and He will give you rest. Think of that one thing that you are burdened. Imagine yourself bringing it to the Lord and placing yourself on the altar with it. And imagine God reaching out from heaven and taking you, breaking you, praying over you, thanking His Father for you, and returning you completely healed. So I will say a short prayer, and you may repeat it silently or aloud as the Spirit leads you. Oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. I allow you to enter my life as I empty myself in trust to your Father through you. I believe you are drawing me close to you so you can lead me to get back my inheritance, to live in communion with God. Take, Lord, and do to me as you will, because I trust in you. Lead me through my situation, because I trust in you. And lead me, O Lord God, 
to victory so that I may completely destroy whatever it is that burdens me. In your mighty name, O Lord Jesus, I pray. O Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. O Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. O Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.